History is the study of past events using the sources of what is written, what is said, and what is physically preserved. It is also a subjective process of recreating past occurrences and is a matter of perspective. It gives people a sense of identity, prevents them from repeating previous mistakes, and makes them aware of their roots, as well as those of different cultures, peoples, and countries. History can be studied at different levels, such as national, regional, and global, but all these levels exhibit that humankind is not isolated from each other in the past and present, and are interdependent. Historians, specifically Western historians, divided historical studies into four periods. The first period was called prehistory, which begins at the first the appearance of human beings on Earth and continues until the development of writing systems. The prehistoric era is also subdivided and named according to tool-making technologies, such as Stone Age, Bronze Age, and Iron Age. Archaeology is the subject matter and the only source for the study of this period. The second period is called Ancient History, 3600 BC 500 AD, which begins with the first records in writing and ends after the fall of several big empires, including the Western Roman Empire, the Han Dynasty in China, and the Gupta Empire in India. The third period is called Medieval History, 500-1500 AD, which begins with the fall of the aforementioned empires and ends with the invention of the printing press, the discovery of America, and the Ottoman Empire's conquest of Constantinople. The fourth period is called Modern History, 1-500-present, which begins from the end of the medieval period up until today. Each period is subdivided into phases with specific common characteristics, although each phase generally lacks clearly demarcated lines and tends to overlap one another. Evidently, the Western historical narrative has been portrayed as the universal history, which rightly conforms to the theory of power relations and the production of history. To sift through what is generally shared from what is distinct and specific in the history of humankind, and it is evident that the first two periods— Prehistory and ancient history could be considered to a certain degree as the general history of all humankind, with some differences in the different continents and regions. For example, while some regions are still in the prehistoric period, others may be in the ancient or even in the medieval period. So we should consider historical periods merely as a general trend of human history. With respect to the third and fourth periods, the trends in the human history diverged, and its universality thus became dubious. For instance, the Dark Ages or the Medieval Period in the European history, 500-1500 AD, was a period of intellectual darkness and barbarity in Europe, whereas this time marked a golden period for the Islamic civilization. This civilization produced great scientific, philosophic, and artistic culture, while at the same time it assimilated scientific knowledge of other civilizations such as Greece, Persia, and China. Therefore, from now on, we will use the terms European medieval history and Islamic medieval history to illustrate commonality in the time and difference in the developmental stage. Moreover, modern European history, which is characterized by iconic periods such as the Renaissance, the Industrial Revolution, colonization, and the age of technological advancement, was totally different from the conditions of the colonized countries. This period was, for instance, a time of decadence in the Islamic civilization and an era of colonialism and nation-state formation. Thus, this period could be called, in the Somali context, the pre-colonial, colonial, and post-colonial period. Hence, in the case of Somalia, being part of Islamic civilization, the third period of its history begins with the introduction of Islam in the Somali peninsula in the 7th century and ends with the collapse of the Muslim states of the Ajuran and Adal Sultanates in the 17th century. The fourth period could be considered as the era of decadence, as symbolized in the pre-colonial era of fragmented states, followed by the reconfiguration of society through colonialism and the post-colonial state. The pre-colonial phase begins with the fall of Islamic dynasties in the Somali Peninsula and the establishment of clan-based small states until colonial incursion in 1885. It was followed by the colonial era from 1884 to 1960, in which Somalia experienced multiple colonialism with its rancor and hostility. Finally, the post-colonial phase begins from 1960 and continues until the current time, which is characterized by the rise and fall of the state 
and its subsequent catastrophic implications. Having laid the frame of Somali history, we will turn now to pen an overview of the ancient and Islamic medieval period of the Somali history to produce a history of the people, who are often thought of as the people without history. Herein, we exhibit that colonized people have their own historical trajectory in parallel that of European history. The Somali Peninsula is located on a strategic trade route connecting Africa, Asia, and Europe. It is the cradle of the human race and the kernel of ancient civilizations. The Cushitic-speaking people, to whom the Somalis belong, have dwelled in this region as indigenous people for the past 7,000 years. This evidence challenges the hypothesis on the origins of the Somali people, which asserts that the Somalis migrated either from southern Ethiopian highlands in the 1st century AD or from South Arabian Peninsula after the 10th century AD. This hypothesis implies that Somalis are newcomers in the territory they occupy today, and that they dislodged other people in the early centuries. Historical evidence shows that the Somali peninsula was the nexus of the global economy, and that various commodities were commonly traded, such as frankincense, myrrh, and spices, with ancient Egyptians, Phoenicians, Mycenaeans, and Babylonians. These commodities were produced and exported from the land of Punt, which is situated in the northeastern Somalia. Moreover, other trading cities had flourished along the Indian Ocean littorals, as the Periplus of the Erythrean Sea reported in the 1st century AD. In the medieval Islamic period that began in the 7th century, the Islamization of the Somali society was at pace and intensified in the successive centuries, thereby enhancing its historic ties with the Arabian Peninsula. Locally, Somalis became part of the Muslim sultanates of Ifat and Adal in the 13th century and played a significant role in the push-pull wars with the Abyssinian Empire in the highlands. In addition, the Ajuran Sultanate, the largest state in pre-colonial Somalia, had emerged in the 14th century and extended its authority to most of the southern Somalia until the 17th century. The Ajuran state is credited for repulsing the Oromo invasion from the west of Somali-inhabited territory, as well as the Portuguese foray from the Indian Ocean. Moreover, the Ajuran Sultanate undertook an assertive plan of spreading Islam throughout East Africa. Both the Adal Sultanate and Ajuran dynasty were weakened in the 17th century and were replaced by fragmented, clan-centric states until colonial powers seized the opportunity and dominated the Somali Peninsula. The general historiography of the Somali Peninsula presents a picture as if its history began with the colonial period, while its rich ancient and medieval Islamic history have been given less attention. This shortcoming diminishes a sense of pride and historical awareness of the Somalis and reduces the value and importance of rich and unique human civilizations that flourished once upon a time in this region. A sense of history is vital to developing a sense of connectedness in order to understand past challenges and crises, to preserve collective memory, and revive the conception of historical nationhood. Therefore, this paper aims to make an overview of the less addressed historical period of the people of the Somali Peninsula and to reconstruct, in a concise manner, its ancient and medieval Islamic history. The literature review covers the ancient and medieval Islamic civilizations and the emergence of Muslim sultanates in the Somali territory. The paper forms a conclusion on the major historical themes of the period under study and puts forth contested narratives that require further research. Literature Review Historical studies often begin with a literature review in order to get an idea of what previous scholars have written about a particular topic under investigation. In doing so, we found that academic studies on the ancient history of the people of the Somali Peninsula is very limited to the extent that it presents an enormous historical gap and an intellectual black hole. Therefore, this paper relies on bits and pieces of general historical literature scattered articles, and archaeological works. The first written work, which describes commercial links and cities on the littorals of the Indian Ocean, is the The Periplus of the Erythrean Sea, a travelogue written by a Greek traveler in the first century AD. The other important document to be consulted is the PhD thesis of Muhammad Nu, titled History in the Horn of Africa, 1000 BC, 1500 AD 
which offers a comprehensive ancient and European medieval history of the people in the Somali Peninsula until the end of the European medieval period. Other less studied historical sources are archaeological work carried mainly by visiting European researchers. The first archaeological work on Somalia was published by the Italian scholar Paolo Graziosi in 1940. It was seconded by the British archaeologist Desmond Clark, who published his classical work on the prehistoric cultures of the Horn of Africa in 1954. Other scholars who contributed to the Somali archaeological research include British scholar Chittick H.N., who led an expedition mission to the town of Hafun, the ancient trading port of Opon, mentioned in the Peralpus of Erythrean Sea. Chittick published his first work on Somali archaeology in 1969. In addition to that, archaeologist Brant S.A. also published a number of archaeological papers. Alas, after the collapse of the Somali state in 1991, archaeological work came to a complete halt, and national archives, museums, and the National Academy of Culture were vandalized. In the misery of conflict and civil war, Somalia lost its valuable artifacts and national heritage, which still requires relocation and repatriation. Recently, Somaliland Department of Antiquity initiated some archaeological work that includes mapping the archaeological sites. For example, Somali archaeologist Sada Mire's paper, Mapping the Archaeology of Somaliland, Religion, Art, Script, Time, Urbanism, Trade, and Empire includes more than 100 new and previously unpublished sites. Meyer concludes in her research that the region, Somali Peninsula, had vast Cushitic pre-Christian and pre-Islamic empires that at times formed part of the Himyarite and Sabaean cultures of southern Arabia, the Aksumite Empire and early Islamic empires of the Horn of Africa. Following Meyer's efforts, the number of literature on the medieval Islamic period increased, with a number of academic studies consistently published. Among these works, four scholarly books stand out of the crowd. The first comprehensive historical book was authored by Ali Abdurrahman Hersi. This work is a seminal piece of research dealing with the less addressed issues in the Somali history. It digs deep into the history of the Somali peninsula in the ancient era and its trade links with the rest of the ancient world. The focus of the book is the emigration of Arabs in the medieval period to Somalia, in addition to their enterprises and the massive conversion of the Somalis to Islam. Moreover, the book further explores the emergence of Muslim sultanates in northern Somalia, the rise of the Ajuran Sultanate, and the Somali interaction with the Portuguese and Turkish powers. Furthermore, the book delves into the colonial incursion of the 19th and 20th centuries, its impact, and the subsequently strengthened cultural ties between Somalia and the Arab world. The second work was authored by Scott S. Reese and traces the history of the Banaderi community their migration to Somalia in the medieval Islamic era, and their habitat in the cities of Mogadishu, Mirka, and Barawe. It is an excellent history that draws substantially on an oral collection of the historical data and contributes to the study of the history of the Somali minorities. The third work, authored by Virginia Luling, provides detailed descriptions of the Geledi city-state and the adjacent clans dwelling in and around Afgoya since the late 17th century. Luling, besides a good background section, reconstructs the social fabric at the larger regional level and investigates the ways in which traditional relationships and cultural features reshape themselves in new and modern contexts. Written in a clear and accessible style, this is an excellent and up-to-date introduction to the ethnography of Somalia. The fourth work, authored by Lee Casanelli, reconstructs and interprets certain aspects of Somali history in the pre-colonial period and offers an excellent background section on the medieval Islamic period. It explores the history of southern Somalia from the 16th to the 19th centuries. This book studies nomadic ethno-history and oral history, and the author approached the study of Somalia's pastoral history from a regional perspective. The author is one of the leading Western scholars on Somalia, and his research is considered a good basis for the study of the pre-colonial history of Somalia. Other complementary literature includes Muhammad Mukhtar's paper, which offers a historical background on the introduction of Islam in Somalia, which also examines the claims of some Somali clans to originate from Arab descendants and puts forth a counter-narrative. Moreover, the of Futu al-Habasha, 
authored by Sheba Adin Ahmed, offers a detailed description of the campaign of Imam Ahmed Ibrahim Gure and his encounter with the Abyssinian Empire. This book documents Somali clans who participated in the campaign and their crucial role in the jihad. The recent PhD thesis by Avishai Ben Dror provides a history of the city of Harar within the context of the medieval history wars between Abyssinia Empire and Muslim sultanates. It particularly focuses on the Egyptian rule of the historic Islamic city of Harar, 1875 to 1884. The Ancient History of the Somali Peninsula The land inhabited by the Somali people is situated in the Horn of Africa, jutting out into the India Ocean to form the Somali Peninsula. The Horn of the African region is believed to be the cradle of the humanity, as archaeological discoveries of 1967 in the Ethiopian Omo River had attested. At the bank of this river, the oldest known fossil of modern human skulls was discovered dating back to approximately 195,000 years ago. The first team of archaeologists led by Richard Leakey had unearthed modern human fossils consisting of two skulls and one partial skeleton in the Omo Basin in Ethiopia, which was estimated to date back to approximately 130,000 years ago. However, another team of scientists from the Australian National University revisited the site in 2005, and came across additional fragments of the fossilized skull that matched those of the original skulls. The new findings were dated as approximately 195,000 years old, using modern radiocarbon dating, making them the oldest modern human remains so far discovered. These human remains were deposited in Addis Ababa Museum as witness that the Horn of African region is the cradle of mankind. Further, in the northeastern Horn of Africa, nowadays known as Somali-inhabited territory, the oldest indication of human habitation during the Stone Age was evidenced with the discovery of Akulian stone blades and flint tools discovered in the vicinity of Hargaisa and in the caves along the Golis Escarpment, dating back to roughly 12,000, 40,000 years. Moreover, Hayward Seton Carr, 1859-1938, a game hunter and adventure traveler associated with the British Royal Geographical Society, discovered stone hand axes at Jalelo on the slopes of a hill between the port of Berbera and Hargesa in 1896, which dates back to 40,000 years. The Somalian prehistoric hand axes were placed in museums, including the British and the Australian museums. More evidence of prehistoric human habitation of the Somali territory was discovered at Las Gil Complex, located about 50 kilometers north of Hargaisa. As Ahmed Ali Ilmi puts it, the Las Gil cave paintings depict images of cows, local inhabitants dressed in what appear to be ceremonial robes, and a few dogs in what also appear to be ceremonial robes. The humans have their hands in the air in what is considered a worshipping posture. The cave walls are also covered in old hieroglyphic scripture. Somalis have known of the existence of the caves for centuries and have regarded them as historical sites, hence the Somali name for the caves. Yet the Western world only found out about these sites in 2003 when a French team of archaeologists was searching the caves in the area. In this archaeological site, rock art of wild animals is estimated to date back to 5,000 years. Paintings at Las Gil demonstrate early pastoral livestock herding in the Horn of Africa. In particular, the camel is believed to have been domesticated in the Horn of Africa between the 3rd and 2nd millennium BC, and from there spread to Egypt and North Africa. Additionally, between the towns of Las Corre and Elayo lies the Karen Hegani site, which encompasses numerous cave paintings with real and mythical animals estimated to be 2,500 years old. Other prehistoric archaeological sites discovered in the southern Somalia included cemeteries at Bur Hebe Bur Isle and Gogoshius Kab, the furnished place, located near the district of Bardale, 60 kilometers southwest of Baidoa, and is estimated to have been used for over 4,000 BC. The 14 burials founded there date back to the pre Islamic period and constitute the earliest burials in the Horn of Africa, containing the earliest definitive grave artifacts. Archaeological studies and discoveries of the ancient civilizations in the Somali-inhabited territories are yet to be given serious attention and may reveal new historical evidence. Nonetheless, 
The above archaeological findings challenge the early hypothesis on the origins of Somali people from the southern Ethiopian highlands, specifically those from the Omotana region, who later migrated into the northern Kenya in 1000 BC. According to this hypothesis based on historical linguistics, Somalis migrated north in the first century AD to populate the Horn of Africa. The new findings suggest that Somalia is a nation with a history that stretches back more than 10 millennia to the beginnings of human civilization. It also suggests that the ancestral home of the Somalis was the northern part of the peninsula, with the peninsula always being inhabited by the Somalis. This finding also casts doubts on the orally constructed origins of Somalis from the Arabian Peninsula, pushing Oromo and Bantu further south and westwards, which had already been discredited by the historic linguistic approach. The original homeland of the Somalis, being the Horn of Africa, was established through linguistic studies and archaeological discoveries which conclude that Cushitic language-speaking people such as the Oromo, Somalis, Sidamo, and Afar have been indigenous people in the northeast Africa for the last 7,000 years. The Somali peninsula was always a strategic magnet and commercial nexus of the world trade routes in both the past and present times. Its strategic and commercial importance has continued since ancient times when merchants from the Somali peninsula traded various commodities such as frankincense, myrrh, cinnamon, ebony, ivory, gold, and animal skin with ancient Egyptians, Phoenicians, Mycenaeans, and Babylonians. These commodities, which were the most ancient and precious articles of commerce, are still produced and exported from the northeastern regions of Somalia. Frankincense is a resin exuded from various spices of Boswellia, Olibanum indicum, Latin, a very expensive commodity used as a perfume for medicinal treatments and as an incense. The frankincense tree grows in arid regions of the Horn of Africa. On the other hand, myrrh, a gum from the bark of a small tree, is less expensive than frankincense and used to perfume clothing as an incense and for embalming. The Egyptians called the land of Punt or Puenet or Tenetjer, land of the gods, in reverence of the Egyptian sun god, R.A., and used both frankincense and myrrh for religious purposes and cosmetics. In particular, the Somali Peninsula had a special relationship with ancient Pharaonic Egypt, with various Egyptian expeditions sent to the Somali Peninsula being recorded since 2480 BC. It seems that the Egyptians initiated direct commercial transaction with the original source of the merchandise in Somalia, which they began during the rule of Mentuhotep III, around 1950 BC, when the officer Hanu organized multiple trips to the land of Punt. However, as time passed, relations between ancient Egypt and the people of the Somali Peninsula strengthened beyond mere commercial connections. For example, there is evidence of cultural links and the movement of people, as recorded in some ancient Egyptian inscriptions reporting the arrival of immigrants from the land of Punt. This piece of information is supported by related evidence that the son of Khufu, the pharaoh of the Great Pyramid, employed one of these immigrants in his court. From historic linguistics, it was also discovered that the Somali language shares a number of etymological words with the ancient Egyptian language that has exactly the same meaning. However, the most authentic piece of historical literature treating the ancient history of Somali Peninsula was in the hierographic diary and arts of the expedition of the fleet that consisted of five ships dispatched to the land of Punt by Queen Hatshepsut, of the 18th dynasty in 1478 BC. The history of this expedition was memorialized in the artifacts of the Temple of Queen Hatshepsut at Deir el-Bari, near Luxor, in the Valley of the Kings in Egypt, during the reign of the Puntite King Parahu and Queen Ati. Hieroglyphic engravings on Hatshepsut's temple shows the following written inscription, sailing on the sea and making a good start for God's land, making landfall safely at the terrain of Punt, a description of a typical man from the land of Punt is described as a tall, well-shaped man. His hair is bright, his nose is straight, his beard long and pointed, growing only on his chin. He wears only a loincloth with a belt in which a dagger is fixed. The people of the land of Punt were known as warriors who were feared by those who saw them in battle. 
The ancient land of Punt originally encompasses the whole region that includes Eritrea, Ethiopia, and Somalia. Yet it is almost undisputable that the site of the Hatshepsut expedition was the tip of the Somali peninsula. 